Okay, so now it's time for us to put some keyboards in. Uh, we've got some, a melody line, a monophonic melody line. We have some drums and we have some bass already. Um, I'm going to just go and grab a electric keyboard type sound. Yep, that'll do. And check my keyboard. Yep, that works. Now, the thing is with recording keyboards is that you really got to make sure that you'd have um, one hand per track. You don't have to, there are way around, ways around it, but I find the simplest way of working with MIDI and then importing it into Sibelius is to just record them right hand separately from the left hand. Now, um, if that's really difficult for you, I might be able to show you something later on, which means you can record both hands at once and then notate it correctly in Sibelius. But I find for students, it's just kind of more confusing. I really encourage them just to try and do one hand at a time. And that seems to be the simplest um, way of making it work later on. Of course, so I'm only using this tiny wee keyboard, so I have to record one hand at a time. Later on, I will get a bigger keyboard out when I do a more complicated project, but I'll just keep it one hand per part for now. So I'm just going to record the right hand. So I'm going to rename this part Keys RH for right hand. Of course, I forgot to rename my bass part before too. So Keys right hand. Let's give this a go. Okay, not the most convincing keyboard part I know, but I was just trying to give a mixture of block chords and arpeggio, broken chord pattern type stuff to show how that's going to look in notation later on. Um, I wouldn't usually play a part like that, but this is just for the purposes of demonstration. All right, so we have all our notes in. Let's just straight away select them all, which of course it's not doing to me. Select them all in here then. Let's make sure we get the right ones. Select those and Q for quantize. Let's zoom in nice and closely to it, follow along and see how it goes. Okay, I can see some issues at the beginning. This note here triggered the whole way through when I was supposed to have played it as a separate note as part of the chord. So I'm just going to go back and bring that in line with these other two. And that will make, and then I'll repeat the note. Now how did I do that? I held down the Option and Alt key, clicked it and just dragged it along and it automatically copies a note. So I can go through now and what I need to do is make sure that my lengths of my notes go the full length. Now, this is the perhaps a little annoying side of things that you've got to do this manually, but if, I'm in, if, I've, if I just played eighth notes the whole way through with no sixteenth notes this would be easier, because when I did my end value of my quantize it would just snap everything across, but because I'm in a sixteenth note grid most of my eighth notes are getting being snapped to the last sixteenth note line rather than all the way across. But those ones there I can do them all at once. Both the same movement required. Let's get a go across. So I'm going to carry on doing the rest um, of this as I go through the rest of the piece and you can have a look at um, kind of what I end up with in a moment. One thing I'll just say though is that these uh, when I go into the broken pattern bits like this I probably need to go and make it simplest as if I just end up notating them like this. They will look a lot nicer if I end up having them go not overlapping. Doesn't sound as nice, but the way a keyboard is, when they read this in notation later on, the way they would play it, they probably have their sustain pedal on to a certain extent and they will end up making a nice smooth sound. So remember we're not trying to produce a recording here that sounds good, we're just trying to produce stuff that looks good for the notation. So anytime there's broken pattern stuff, I'm going to go and just make sure that the notes are not overlapping and this will help a lot with how it looks later on. So I'll continue through and you can come back to me at the end. Okay, I've got to the end. Now this took me a couple of minutes to do that and I was only doing, was that eight bars? So this is probably a time consuming process. So maybe a word of advice would be when you're doing your piano parts, stay consistent. Maybe keep it just a block pattern, 
um, or maybe do it all eighth notes and it will make everything a lot easier. Going between the two as I've done um, has slowed down the process quite a bit. Now if you're doing something which is you know funky James Brown Tower of Power type thing then it's going to be tough. There's no way around that. Trying to notate those things is tough. It's tough even if you know heaps about notation. You can do it all, you know, transcribe all orally and write it down. Uh, so this is not a shortcut for doing really tough things like uh, funk or disco or those kinds of genres. But anyway, let's uh, export what we have here now. It's all looking pretty good. Let's ex export everything and see what it's going to look like in Sibelius. Save as MIDI. Okay, and Sibelius, let's jump in here, do the quick start, import, MIDI file. You're probably getting sick of seeing this now, but at least you'll know how to do it. Import. Okay, let's just ignore the drums for now. Let's just look at just the keyboard part. Okay, so that's looking pretty good for the keyboard. I mean, if we put the the key signature in, tighten up pretty well. We can just see one thing down here where we had a note, should have actually gone, there should be an E note in there going to a D sharp because it was a B sus chord going to a D sharp. Um, so if I just go and click on a note, oh, let's do it this way. Shift 2 puts a note in that is uh, a tone lower than not the top note. So yeah, that, that works. Might be even better though just to, oh, hold on, just to delete those tires and make that as two separate chords rather than just moving the middle note. Okay, now of course this is the piano part, we want to do our left hand as well, so let's quickly just knock out a left hand part. I'll import another Rhodes Clean keys, left hand, and let's have a go at recording that. And what I'll do is I'll record it, I'll edit it up, and I'll come back to it and I'll show you just the last step in the process in a moment. So, see you in a moment. Okay, I've just recorded in my keyboard part, I did a really quick quantize, checked all the notes, that took me all of it probably about 15 seconds, it was really fast. Um, let's export this now, now that we have a keyboard's right hand and a keyboard's left hand, let's export this file, so I'll save as. Make a MIDI file, keys, both hands. Okay, Sibelius, let's try this. Quick start, new file. Okay, and okay. Right, we want to get the keyboards looking good. Let's just get everything else quickly looking good as well while we're at it. Let's triple click these drums and then put our plug in to make them look a little bit nicer. Let's change our clef on the drums while we're at it. Let's put our key signature into this piece, our G major, one sharp. Let's put the bass into a bass clef. Now, we have our keys here. I'll change my left hand of my keys to have a bass clef also. Now everything is an octave too low, so triple click it, shift it all up an octave. 
Now, they're on separate hands, separate parts, and we don't want them to be in the end. So the way that I fix this is I add in a whole new instrument. Now, adding new instruments in Sibelius, we just push I, and we can find, oh look, there's a piano part selected already. Double click it. It's going to add a new piano part, which has got a treble and a bass stave together. I'm going to select them, move them to the bottom of my piece for now, and go OK. And what I can do, that is how piano should look, with the, we've got this bracket here, bracket into two staves. I'm going to triple click the keyboard part, Control c for copy, select down here, and Control v for paste. Just head back over, do the same thing with the left hand. Triple click it, Control c for copy, click down there, Control v for paste, or Command if you're on Mac, as I am. Um, just as a quick aside, if I just undo that, if you've got a section selected in Sibelius, you can hold down the Alt or Option key, and just click where you want it to go, and it will automatically copy it. Now with the piano part looking good, I can get rid of these two. Triple click them, push delete, yes remove. Triple click, push delete, yes remove. So now we're look, starting to get there. Now this whole um, percussion stave with the sharp on it, because we put the key signature in, I'll show you how to get rid of that one a little bit later on, I forgot to mention that earlier. So anyway, let's have a look at um, having a go at recording some audio and doing the whole audio to MIDI conversion so that we can put it into here.